Hey everybody, Chad Kaleher here, field agronomist with Bex Hybrids in East Central Illinois. Today we're at El Paso, Illinois facility at our Practical Farm Research Site. Today I have with me uh, Clayton Stufflebeam. We're going to talk a little bit about, as you can see the sign behind me, nitrogen applications. So there's a lot of things that we can talk about within PFR, what, what the guys have seen with some of the data and research that they've done at different locations. But here Clayton, um, as we talk about nitrogen applications, what are some of the things that we've been noticing in the last several years of testing as far as split applications of nitrogen compared to just a single application? With uh, split applications, we've learned uh, we did a four-year trial, um, split versus a pre-emerge 28%. Um, over those applications, every single split provided a positive ROI. Over average, we're seeing um, with those applications a $60 average return on investment. You know, what are some other things that you've, you've learned in PFR as far as uh, some of the late planned applications of nitrogen? You know, as we think about some of that application technology with Y drops compared to, say, side dress application with a Coulter injection, uh, what are some of the things you've been seeing there? Let's go right into timing. Um, we've done timings from V3 through V12 in the past. This year we've got a planned VT application. Really depends on the year and location. Um, overall, past two years, a V3 side dress versus a V7. The V7 did better, but was only a 0.1 bushel better. Um, but it really depends on your year. Uh, if we have rains early or rains late, will dictate um, how well your nitrogen applications do. Uh, as when concerning this plot behind us, our nitrogen application study is we, where we take a side dress application with a culture versus a a Y drop application at V5. Okay. Two year long term data, um, multiple site locations, we'll see, we're seeing a 5.8 bushel increase with the Y drop system. Okay. Okay. So, um, you know, one of the things you hit on there was uh, taking a look at the hybrids. You know, there's a hybrid right. response, and uh, that's something we want to talk about a little bit here as we, as we talk about nitrogen management because different hybrids can behave differently, right? Sure. So, uh, we, there's different categories of nitrogen uptake patterns in hybrids. And if, if we think about how much nitrogen is accumulated in the plant by the time we get to tassel time, about 75% of the nitrogen has been taken up by the plant at about tassel time. So uh, with that said, we also want to state that you know about 50% of that nitrogen over the course of the growing season is about V10, which is about waist high, up until tassel time. So that rapid growth phase of V10 up to tassel time is a huge amount of uptake. So we, we tend to like the uh, and recommend some of these later applications, kind of what you guys have been seeing, some of these yield adva uh, advantages from these later planned applications is, is a good thing to think about. But going back to the hybrids with the different use patterns, you know, behind us here we have two different hybrids. As you can see, there's two different hybrids. One, one over here on the left, 5765. That's a 65 family product. And we have another product on the right side here, 5829. Uh, these are two very different types of products as far as their nitrogen use pattern. So if we're in a year where we typically find that we've got loss from nitrogen, uh, whatever pathway it might be, maybe additional rainfall in June. In some areas this year, there's there's up to seven inches of rainfall in the geography that I cover. And those are the guys that are thinking about maybe going in with additional nitrogen right. prior to tasseling. So which hybrids do we want, really want to do that with? Um, you know, there, there are certain ones that we want to think about that we, we do uh, put an application of nitrogen on, maybe additional nitrogen, say 30, 40, maybe 50, 60 pounds. It just kind of depends on what your, uh, your budget is and how much you think you've lost. There are different ways to identify that. We can do soil nitrate and ammonium test at one to two foot depths, or there's also tissue tests that we can pull and get those results back. But 5829 over here on the right side of the screen is a hybrid that we determine to be a nitrogen efficient user or efficient user of nitrogen. So if we're in a year where we lose some nitrogen out of the soil profile where the roots can't get it, that's a hybrid that would tend to respond less to additional units of nitrogen, say, at that late planned application, say, around pre-tassel time. Now the one on the left over here, 5765, that family has a lot of products in it. 5765 is one of the newer ones. 5665, 6165, 6365. There's many products in that family. It's one that we consider to be more of a uh, less efficient user of nitrogen than the 5829 on the right. And these are things that you can find on our fact sheets at the bottom of our hybrid profile fact sheets. It will state what type of a nitrogen efficient user it is. 
uh, if it has a high response to uh, later nitrogen or if it has a low response to later applied nitrogen. So this is one over here, 5765. That family of 65 products is one that we typically find that if we apply additional nitrogen, we tend to see positive results. Our fact sheets we have for each hybrid uh, on our website at bexhybrids.com. You can go into the product section, download a PDF of the product fact sheet, and you will see down at the bottom left-hand corner the response to higher nitrogen, whether it be low, medium, or high, and also our nitrogen timing if we want to see more nitrogen loaded on the back side versus early up front. So if you have any questions, please let us know. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Clayton. Thank you.